All right, uh, welcome back here. We're just learning the FAA is having a, a new investigation of some regional jets, safety checks necessary for hundreds of these regional jets. The inspections proposed to prevent flap failures on some bombed air jets. The FAA says the 2007 directive to fix problems apparently proved inadequate. So if we get more information on that, of course, we'll pass it along. But, but good luck getting on any plane uh, today because it's, 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 you can't fly anywhere. You just trudge around in slush. All right. So a bailout or a timeout, or whatever you call this $17.5 billion industry loan or gift, it does not address the demand issue. Our Fox uh, stars here to weigh in, including Jonathan Oning, Adam Lashinsky, Dan Frischberg, Tracy Burns. Trace, what do you this is, I think, is the root of the problem. Neil, they couldn't sell these cars in good times. Now times are bad. People want quality. They don't feel like they're getting it. If I were these auto companies, I'd take a billion dollars off the top and just put it into marketing. Get the word out there. You know, these cars are on the top of the list of the J.D. Power & Associates. They're great cars. They're great cars. Right? But some, there is a disconnect between the people and the you know, product. They need to get the word out there. Otherwise, we're, we're going to drown. The, the companies are going to go away. Dan, we have uh, the cycle is continuing again. I, I kind of think this is a tee up for more money they'll get. Uh, you know, in an Obama administration and a friendlier Congress. What do you think? I think if you were trying to get the price of cars down, this would be the exact right tactic, supply side economics. But that's not what we want to do. We want to do the exact opposite. And nothing they're going to do is going to improve the car business or sell one extra car, increase the GDP or do other If people else. don't want to borrow in this environment, uh, they're just not going to borrow no, or buy it, or anything, right? You could save 90 percent of this money by simply giving some aid to those workers that would be put out of work, fine, give them more unemployment, subsidize Why, Dan, them. They don't. Well, this not, is the exact opposite they, of the they don't Jonathan Honig. Uh, Why don't they deserve they, it, Jonathan? Neil, because you don't, uh, you don't uh, have the right to something because you failed to earn it. You have a right to something if you earn it. And I'm sorry, but these auto companies have done this to themselves. And I know you sound a little out of fashion these days, but they just simply have no right to my money. This is theft from the taxpayer. This is a theft from the bondholder who actually should hold the own these companies right now. And it's going to just continue on this cycle of billions of billions of dollars flushed down the drain. Well. Adam, be, be, be that be that as it may, the, the the question is: Is it necessary to do something for the auto industry to prevent a larger systemic risk to the to the global financial system? And President Bush, whether for political or economic reasons, has decided that the that the answer to that question is yes. Neil, this won't do anything to help the demand. And Tracy, well, he, I'm you, not well, sure Adam, you're right. I mean, he even said that you know, in any other kind of situation, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be letting him rip. He didn't say that, but he more or less implied that. But these are different he, times, he, right? Yeah, he more or less, right, he more or less did say that because he said, you know, we can't afford to have them go bankrupt at this time. What he really was saying there, after I'm off the stage here, then they can go bankrupt. This will, by the way, So this was all about not dropping this in Obama's lap, right? I think so. And, uh, but but what, we will, what we need to see happen, obviously, is to address the supply is issue in the auto industry. They need to make fewer cars. Yeah. Now, bankruptcy would, would make that happen. Under this plan, too, they're going to have to cut massively, and that will result in fewer cars also. You know, I don't know if this is about saving Obama at all, because I think he punted on the whole thing. I mean, the language is wishy-washy. It's as, you know, we all know it's not going to do anything. So I... What is it, his last little PR stunt? I mean, I kind of was disappointed in the whole thing. But, but, well, you know, I mean, now, look, like, when you have an approval rating as low as this, I mean, he doesn't need PR stunts. Okay, so then why bother at this I point? Agree. He knew well, look, that we, it was the because, wrong thing well, to our, do. Our analysis of the economy is that a whole bunch of more people out of work would hurt. But all this money we're going to spend to build cars that nobody still wants, and all the parts they're going to produce are going to be sitting in warehouses. <laughs> You're going to load more cars onto lots that aren't going to be sold. And so all you're doing is postponing the thing for another few months. The That's car right. company. Well, isn't, it, isn't that the idea, Jonathan? The idea was buy them a little bit of time. I know you're against this, but then by the time, you know, uh, they're right through the last pennies, the, things are percolating again. Well, Neil, I'm sorry. The smartest industry analysts in the world don't think that there's a, a future for these car companies. I don't know why Chris Stodd and Eleven, who you had on earlier, think that they're so smart that if they can just advise GM how to market their cars, the companies will be thriving again. You notice they get, very the ang they get very angry at you if you challenge them, though, like you're a callous SOB. Yeah, it's but, you know, Neil, they have so, they have so <laughs> much care about the poor, down-on-his-work automaker, but no care about the American taxpayer who's actually paying for all this. And, of course, you, I include AIG and Bear Stearns and all the rest. Point. 
Congress. That's a and very this is coming and you know out of what? our viewers' pockets. Matt, and that's Matt, not fair. The amount of jobs we're going to lose out of this dinosaur industry doesn't compare to the amount of jobs that we're going to lose from the small businesses of the world that are going to go down because we're not right. taking care of so them. Right. Look, so this, got, let it go. you got to remember, there was an election. We didn't win. I voted for the Republican side, but we didn't win. And the country has chosen this Dan, who is this coming kind of from? approach. Dan, it's going this to happen. is coming the question from the is, Republican what's the most side. Did we vote for this? Pardon me? We voted for this, though. <laughs> Or did, I don't well, think this was on the ballot. It, but I don't think this was on the ballot. But Frank. the question is, what's the most efficient well, thing? Well, we don't know. We don't, guys, I want to thank you all. Uh, things have been abbreviated with all this breaking news and all. You were all great. Have a wonderful weekend.